This week, we're investigating the mental health crisis impacting our kids. One in six Gen Zers now say they use TikTok every day and increasingly as a search engine looking for advice. National consumer correspondent Usher Qureshi exposes the potential dangers posed by some influencers and the unlikely social media star who's trying to set them straight. Social media therapy, it's trending. On TikTok, the hashtag mental health has been searched more than 67 billion times. If you've got ADHD, autism, or you have ADHD, let's talk about suicide awareness. This time has been super difficult for all of us. The search became a serious problem for Samantha Fridley. Originally, it was more, I was just looking for like mental health advocacy. It turned into diagnosis. As a high schooler who was already seeing a therapist for anxiety and depression, Fridley watched countless videos of influencers sharing thoughts on mental health conditions and says TikTok flooded her feed with hundreds more. It made it a lot worse. My anxiety was constantly like, well, if I have this, then like, what if I have this? People are going to look at me like I'm crazy. Soon she started to believe she was bipolar, had borderline personality disorder and ADHD. According to one analysis of popular TikTok videos about ADHD, 52% were deemed misleading. It just got to a point where I was losing sleep because of it. I would be up until like 3 a.m. on TikTok, just like researching. And you were self-diagnosing. Mm -hmm. Were you diagnosed with any of these? Never. The videos in her For You feed were picked for her by TikTok's unique algorithm, based on what she had searched, shared, and liked. In a recent study, researchers posed as 13-year-old users. Searching and liking mental health videos, they say TikTok pushed potentially harmful content on average every 39 seconds. Within 2.6 minutes of joining the app, some of the teens were shown content about suicide. And this one, see, this one got only 39,000. Enter Dr. Ina Kanievsky. She may not look like your typical influencer, but this professor at San Diego Mesa College has become TikTok famous with more than a million followers. She's done it by debunking mental health misinformation one video at a time. People on TikTok have said if you talk to yourself, you're showing signs of mental illness. If you've been talking to yourself, that is actually a trauma response. Can we not? Can we not over pathologize normal behavior? Especially? Yes, you can give people advice based on your experience as long as you're clear that that's where you're coming from. This, this is harmful. Very often, these things are not presented that way. They are not presented as in, this is my personal experience, but they are presented in like, did you know that this is what it is? Like, if you are autistic, you do this. If you have depression, you do this. So it's not, it may be informed by, by, by their personal experience, but that's not what they're making it sound like. While her videos have 36 million likes so far, Dr. Ina says she can't get TikTok to take down content she's flagged. This is TikTok's Los Angeles headquarters. We asked to meet them in person to talk about their algorithm and the mental health content that's being pushed to young users, but they declined an interview. They did email us a statement saying they are testing ways to avoid recommending a series of similar content on topics, even though they admit that what you consume on the platform drives what you see. They also wrote, quote, we strongly encourage individuals to seek professional medical advice if they are in need of support and that they would remove misinformation that causes harm, regardless of intent. These platforms are created as businesses to make money. Robin Stevens spent years studying and critiquing social media platforms. Now she's advising Instagram. Do the platforms need to do more to curate this? Absolutely. She's part of a group of experts now training influencers to create responsible mental health content. Too many people can be impacted by one person's opinions or actions for it to be completely unchecked. Samantha had to check out and detox from social media. She spent 56 days in residential rehab. No phone or TikTok allowed. Do you still use it? Yeah. Yeah. But differently. Yeah. How do you use it now? I don't use it for information anymore or, you know, finding a diagnosis or finding like an illness. Like I use it for, you know, kind of like a form of like comedy. <laughs> like there's funny videos on there, so. Social media platforms, including TikTok and Instagram, are now the target of state and federal lawsuits. Lawyers representing young people in California and elsewhere in the country claim the platform's algorithms have caused dangerous behaviors, including eating disorders and even suicide. Facebook, YouTube, and Snap are also named in the suits. I'm Usher Qureshi.
Now, the young woman in that piece says she beat the algorithm and reset her feed by searching for videos about K-pop and entertainment. It's a strategy teens can use if their feeds are flooded with negative posts. Watching, liking, and commenting on positive posts can help displace the negative content, or they can just delete their accounts and start from scratch. If you or someone you know is in crisis, get help from the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline by calling or texting 988. We also have other resources available on our website right now, cbs13.com.